Hey there everyone and welcome back to your 6th, uh, yeah, I'm gonna say 6th video tutorial on SQL injection. Now in the previous tutorial, uh, we started taking a look at how a hacker is going to use an intelligent brute forcing method to find out what your column names are in a specific query. Uh, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at something similar. We're going to be looking at how a hacker can gain the current database name, as in the overall database that's being used. Uh, you'll be happy to know that this is a much simpler uh, thing to do compared with intelligently brute forcing the column names. So let's jump right into that. Over here in our find a user page, uh, we just have the same basic old find user page as we have in all of the previous tutorials. Just enter in a username, submit, and you'll get a username and email address back out again. Now, if you remember back in, I believe it was tutorials three and four maybe, uh, we started looking at the union statement and how union can be used to output information from the database, whether it's information about these users that we're not supposed to see, or information about the actual version of the database and the database user who's running the queries. Well now, in this video, we're going to take a look at how the union statement can also be used to get the current database name. So if we simply head into our username field where we're going to be injecting our SQL, we can look at the code which is used to get the current database name. Uh, first thing we're going to do, as always, is input our dummy data, which I'm going to use X, as we have done in all the previous tutorials, and we're going to close our data encapsulation once again. And after that, we're going to use a simple union statement once again. We're going to use union select and we're going to select column, or sorry, we're going to select the numbers 1, 2, 3, and in the fourth column which we're selecting is what we're actually going to modify here. We're going to change the fourth column to just output database and uh, an empty pair of brackets right here, and that's going to go to the SQL database and say, hey, uh, what database are we working with right now? And it's just going to return that. So if we select 1, 2, 3 and database, if you remember in the previous union tutorials we discovered that the second column was the username and the fourth column was the email address, so we should see the user's email address be replaced whatever the, with whatever the current database name is. So we're going to comment out the rest of that query and we're going to submit that. And there you go, you see for the username uh, that got replaced with a 2 because we inputted the numbers 1, 2 and 3 and then we chose to output the database name instead of the uh, current user's email address. Uh, and you see that their email has been replaced with the word test, meaning that the current database we're working with is simply named test, which I can confirm the database is in fact called test. Uh, so that's all we're going to go over today, guys. This is kind of a short tutorial, but it's, I mean, it's a pretty simple thing to get down. You just use database followed by two empty brackets to get the name of the current database you're working with. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, so thanks very much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.